Turn with me to the 23rd number of the song. We all know this one, but we're going to see if we can find new water in an old well. Psalms 23. It's a psalm of David. And it says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. And while he's at it, he's leading me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely. Goodness and mercy shall be with me all of the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever I bring this psalm into our conversation because just like David many of you are walking through the path of your life and you got waters threatening you you got shadows of death threatening you. You've got the loss of a job threatening you, health maladies threatening you. You've got all of these things that you're trying to figure out how to deal with simultaneously. And if you ain't dealing with the bills, you're dealing with the sickness. If you're not dealing with the sickness, you're dealing with betrayal. If you're not dealing with betrayal, then you're dealing with the job. If you're not dealing with the job, then you're dealing with the children. You've got all of these things trying to get your attention all at the same time. And it can be frustrating answering multiple things at the same time. So this message is designed to do one thing. And that is to help you to respond to all of your issues with one statement at one time. I want you to tell everything in your life, I am done splitting my time up between all of you and I'm going to say one thing and all of y'all better get it. The subject won't make sense in the beginning, it will in the end. Everybody just repeat after me, reply all. That, that's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about reply all. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. For those of you all who use email like me, you've made the critical mistake of intending to just answer the sender. And in that conjecture, you need only hit reply. But there is another button right next to it called reply all. And when you reply all, you reply to the sender and to everybody in the two line and everybody that has been carbon copied, CC'd, and God forbid, you reply to the BCs, which are the blind copies, because you really never know all who's in that thing. And when you hit reply all, the engineers were brilliant that it is a way to respond to everybody simultaneously without having to split 
your efforts instantaneously so that you might be able to say one thing to everybody and address all who need to know and who are on the need to know basis because replying all saves time, stress, energy, and sometimes money. Now I want you to put that over here as a title that replying all streamlines the process. I need you to get that, just to position that over here, put it there. It means to reply to everything at the same time. And it's been said that Psalms 23 is the pearl of the Psalms. And I assume that when the writer says that it is the pearl of the Psalms, I do assume through deductive reasoning they mean that this is a thing that is derived out of irritation. It must be true because some writers say that when David wrote this psalm, he was on the run from his son Absalom. But you know, Absalom wanted to replace him as king, and so he thought that he could replace his daddy. He had his daddy on the run. He threatens to kill his father. His father doesn't want to die, so he runs. And somehow his pen finds papyrus, and he begins to inscribe something that would carry us from generation to generation. The psalm is so potent that it has skipped no generation, so powerful that it has not escaped any denomination. Whether you were Christian, Presbyterian, Methodist, Kojic, non-denomination, everybody knows the Lord is <laughs> my shepherd. Doesn't matter if you're in the choir, a deacon, a trustee, an usher, you could probably find the janitor in the restroom mopping, reciting, the Lord is my shepherd. Doesn't matter if you have a PhD, a GED, no D, graduated summa cum laude, graduated eventually, or just graduated when you finished. Everybody can say, the Lord is, are you with me? My shepherd, born out of irritation. And what's interesting about the psalm that has comforted millions of people around the globe, listen to me, and it is soothing for all, the literal back translation of this is quite interesting for most of us only have this psalm memorized in the King James Version of the Bible. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. How do I know that? Because I shall not want is not a part of the English vernacular. You, you don't hear people going to a restaurant and somebody comes and say, uh, what do you want to eat? And you tell them, and I shall not want tomatoes. <laughs> so, so it shows us that, that, that we have this memorized in the King James Version of the Bible, but the, the literal back translation of Psalms 23 as understood by the Camus people of the Laos tribe. Here it is. The great boss is the one who cares for my sheep. I don't want to own anything. The great boss wants me to lie down in the field. He wants me to go to the lake. He makes my good spirit come back. Even though I walk through something the missionary calls the valley of the shadow of death, I do not care because you are with me. You use a stick and a club to make me comfortable. The manufacturer manufactures a piece of furniture right in front of my enemies for them to watch. Watch this. You pour car grease on my head. My cup has so much water in it that it overflows. Goodness and kindness will walk single file behind me all of my life, and I will live in the hut of the great boss until I die 
and am forgotten by my tribe. Did you hear what I just said? Now, now to us, the 23rd number of the Psalms uh, serves as salve for scrapes and cuts. But for the Kamuts people of the Laos tribe, listen, the last sentence, I will live in the hut of the great boss until I die, is translated in our version of Scripture, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. What has comforted us is a crisis for the Kamuts men. The Kamus people are discouraged by the personal pronoun I, as seems to suggest that individually I have access to a place my relatives do not. So their reaction to that particular part of the verse is that I dwelling in the house of the Lord means that I get to spin eternity into a place in heaven that my family gets left behind from. So how is it that we can find comfort in the last verse and they find discomfort in the last verse? Tell your neighbor, stay with us. We're going somewhere. The Lord is my shepherd. I think that before we discuss what he is, let's acknowledge who he is. Everybody say the Lord. Say it again with me, the Lord. The Hebrew word for the Lord here uh, is Yahweh or Jehovah. We're in Bible study, right? We're, we're in Bible study, right? Yahweh and Jehovah, that means that he is the self-sufficient one. Now, what that means is, is that he is all-sufficient, that he needs nothing from anybody, that he is not seeking power because he already has it, he is not seeking wisdom because he can't learn anything. He desires nothing from anybody because he possesses everything. In fact, Jehovah is a combination of a three-tense verb. Watch this. Yehe, which means he will be. Hove means he is becoming. And Heya means he is being, which Revelation 1 and 8 says that he is Alpha and Omega, Yahweh or Yehovah. He is, was, and is to come. I wish you were here with me today. So what that means is, is that God is so self-sufficient that he depends on nothing outside of himself and that God is so big that if he moves, he bumps into himself. Arthur Pink says that God is so big that he has the world in his watch pocket that he does not stand in time, he stands on time because to suggest that he is in time would suggest there is something big enough to house him. That God is so big that if he goes west, he bumps into himself coming from east. And if he goes up, he bumps into himself because he's already down. And that God is everywhere at the same time. And when we suggest that he is omniscient, all-sufficient, and omnipresent, it doesn't mean that God is in today, yesterday, and forevermore only. It means that he was, is, and is to come. And it doesn't mean that he is now and then, but he is and was. He is in the past as well as in the future and he does not have to go into the future because he is already there and he doesn't have to look back on the past because he's already there and by the way he is a very present help in the time of trouble that he's everywhere at the same time and yet we cannot find him but yet we know where he is yet we cannot see him but we behold his face. Yet that we cannot touch him concretely, but we can feel him abstractly. That he is a spirit, but he is also a man. Are you with me today? That he is God on the throne, and yet he is the son at the right hand. And he doesn't have to stop being the daddy in order to be the son, while simultaneously being the paraclete. Which means the personality of the Holy Ghost. Para means with, which means if I'm sick, I need a paramedic with me. If I jump from the sky, I need a parachute with me. And if I'm in trouble, I need the paraclete with me. He is the Lord. And beside him, 
there is no other. And the reason why I pause parenthetically to abstractly explain to you, because most of us look at the Lord as our shepherd and we want to hurry up and get to the shepherd. But before we find out that he's shepherd, we just need to know he is. That's why when Moses goes to Pharaoh and he tells the Lord, he says, who shall I tell them sent me? He says, tell them I am sent you. He is, he is the Lord. And let's not forget that before we start shrinking him down into what we need him to be, shepherd, provider, let's just settle on the fact that he's God. Just fist bump three people and tell them he's God, he's God. He's God, he's God, he's God, he's God. I, I know he's bread, but he's God. I know he's water, but he's God. I know he's a bridge, but he's God. And that ought to be enough. We're so past, we're so in a hurry to get past God so we can get to provider. We're, we're so in a hurry to get past God that we want to get to healer. But, but, but there is, listen, do you know there is money in staying at God? There is healing in God. Don't, don't skip God to get to the pronoun or the adjective or the verb. Let's just settle on the fact before we find out what he is to David. Let's just find out who he is. He's Yahweh. He's Jehovah. He's all sufficient. If he lost his breath, he'd give himself CPR. If he ever lost the ability to see, he'd open his own eyes. If he ever lost the ability to walk, he would just touch his own legs and say walk. Because he's everything at the same time. And he doesn't have to stop being who he is to be what he was. And he doesn't have to stop being what he was to be what he shall be. He just always is. Somebody say the Lord. The Lord. Now that we've discovered that, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me, let's stop right here, beside the still waters. I, I thought that we, that we pause at the water because the nature of sheep prevents them from resting. They, they, are, they are naturally skittish. Everything frightens a sheep. It's almost impossible to get them to voluntarily lay down. But we found out through study that four criteria have to be met in order for a sheep to feel comfortable enough to lie down. Do, do y'all feel this word so far? Yeah, it, four things have to be met. Number one, in order for a sheep uh, to be uh, uh, comfortable enough because of their timidity, they have to be free from fear. So in order for you to get a sheep to lie down, you got to make sure they ain't never scared. Uh, number two, uh, they have to be free from friction because they are socially awkward. They don't like to rub up against other sheep. So you have to make sure that there is no fear. And if you want them to lie down, you gotta make sure that there is no friction. And because their, their coat uh, has the tendency to collect feces, which attracts flies, they cannot rest when flies are around because they will be irritated. So they have to be free from fear, free from friction. And number three, they have to be free from flies. And because they have a huge appetite and have to always be eating, they have to also, watch this, the shepherd has to also make sure that they're free from famine. So if you want a sheep to lie down by the waters, you got to make sure that there are no flies. You got to make sure that there are no fears. You got to make sure that there is no friction and you got to make sure that there is no famine. So through deductive reasoning, if David is saying that the Lord is my shepherd and now he has gotten to the still waters, it parenthetically means that God has taken care of the fear, that God has taken care of the friction, that God has taken care of the flies, and God has taken care of the famine. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm not peaceful in this church because I don't have a situation. I'm peaceful because I got a shepherd. 
I'm not in here worshiping God today because I don't have nothing going on. I just know that when the flies tried to irritate me, God swatted them. And when famine tried to starve me, God took care of it. And when people tried to rub me the wrong way, God took care of it. And when my fears tried to overtake me, God gave me strength. Give three people a high five and say, I'm not here today because ain't nothing wrong. I'm here today because the Lord is my shepherd. I'm looking at at least three or four hundred people in this room and another 10,000 online. If the truth be told, you got enough going on in your life right now to go crazy, to jump off a bridge, to blow your brains away. But you are here today, not because you don't have any stress, but because you got a shepherd. Not because you ain't got a situation, but because you got a shepherd. And I dare you look at somebody who ain't got up yet and say, you must don't know the shepherd. You sit in here worried about somebody who can take care of fleas and flies and famine and fear. The Lord is my shepherd. Just look around and tell somebody, you don't need money. You need a shepherd. You don't need a raise. You need a shepherd. <laughs> Come on, talk to me. You, you, you need a shepherd. Okay, why? Why? Because he's a very present help. Somebody say present. Present. P-R-E-S-E-N-T. He's a present help. He's a present help. Which means that God presents himself. That's why if you go to hell, thou art there. If you go up yonder, thou art there. He presents himself so that when I arrive at the place of my irritation, when I arrive at the place of my famine, when I arrive at the place of my fear, when I arrive at the place of my friction, he's already there. He has already told fear, don't go too far. He has already told the flies, you can buzz, but you can't buzz for long. The Lord is my shepherd. So David is saying, I'm chilling, not because Absalom ain't after me, but I know what my God gonna do to him. And look, David, you are, you, are un, you are immoral and still protected. Oh, y'all don't want to hear me. Because most Christians want to make you think that the protection is only for the good folk. You are immoral. You are a liar. You are not, and you are still protected. Touch your name and say, I know what you think about me. You might call me what you want, but what you can't call me is exposed. <laughs> You can call me what you want, but you, what you can't call me is unprotected. You can call me what you want, but you can't call me unsealed. The Lord is, say it like you mean it, my shepherd. I don't know about you, but I know who my redeemer is. I don't know about you, but I know when I'm going through who I call on. I, I don't know about you, but when I need help, I know who I go to. I go to the rock. David said, I got a situation, but the reason why I'm shouting is because I got a shepherd. We're all the people that know you got a shepherd. See, for those of you online that ain't got it yet, and for those of you in the room don't understand why these people jumping around, they are jumping around because they know who they got on their side. It ain't that they ain't got bills that need to be paid. It's not that they don't get frustrated sometimes. It's not that they don't want to quit, but they know they have a shepherd. Somebody shout, I got a shepherd. Don't y'all make me do this early. Tell somebody, I got a shepherd. Don't do that to me, y'all. Don't, don't do that to me. Somebody out there look like they got a shepherd. Somebody out there act like they know everything is going to be all right. Somebody out there act like weeping may endure for a night. But joy will come in the morning. Tell somebody, say, yeah. Good God tonight. The Lord is my shepherd. 
So I ain't even talking to you because I'm talking, he mine. Tell your neighbor, this, this ain't about you. <laughs> this is about me. He is my shepherd. I shall not want. He make me <laughs> lie down in green path. He restores. Yeah, the us sermon is next week, but this is a me sermon. My. So he leads me in the paths of righteousness for, uh-oh, it shifts his namesake. There's a shift. It been about me this whole time, but now it's about him for his he restores my soul for he leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name sir. the first thing that God ever created and put his image on was man he created trees but he didn't make them in his image he made lions, but he didn't give them salvation. He spoke the stars in the sky into existence. But when it came time for us, You are the only thing in the earth God has ever touched. He calls himself an eagle, but he ain't touched the eagle. He calls himself a tree, but he didn't carve the tree. But when it came to man, he... I can imagine Adam looked like the tin man. First steps as a grown man. He doesn't get to watch anybody walk. He just has to learn to put one in front of the other. Nobody ever taught him how to use opposable fingers and thumbs. He just had to figure it out. Nobody ever told him how to talk. He just had to open his mouth to see what would come out. And God puts his image on him. Dr. Miles Monroe said that this is because God is a manufacturer. Listen to me. Listen to me. God is a manufacturer. That means that since God is a manufacturer, and we are his product, then he has to ensure that we do not fail for his. Hey, let me, let me, let me put it this way. Uh, my daughter is nine. I bought her an iPhone. Why? Did I do that? She nine and she thinks she is tough because she got a 13. And she drops it every five seconds. And I am always putting a new screen on this iPad and this iPhone because she breaks the screen protector first. And I learned this lesson early because if y'all notice, they started advertising uh, out here. Now you can get your phone fixed anywhere. They got these stores. I fix phones. I fix. You fix. We fix. Everybody fix. And, 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 and they tell you that for a, a nominal fee, because they won't charge you what Apple will, that they'll put it on for a fraction of the cost. The problem is, is that since it has an Apple on it, namesake, Apple says that if you allow anybody who's not us to touch the product, then the warranty is forfeited. Why? 
Because when you allow somebody whose image is not on it to touch the product, then the person who put the image on it refuses to guarantee the work of somebody who's unauthorized. So God says, what I have done is I've stamped myself on you and I've warranted you and because when somebody looks at you, they will come back to me to find out why your life is in the shape it's in because I made you, then I go before you and make sure that no weapon formed against you prospers because it is in the best entrance of the company of heaven that you work always. You better hear me. That's why God keeps fixing everything in your life. Not because you're perfect, but for his name. Tell your neighbor, I ain't got what I got because I'm smart. I got it because his name is on the line. <laughs> I'm not still here because I did everything right. He just hid me in the secret place of his pavilion for his name's sake. Is there somebody in this room that will begin to acknowledge God and say the only reason why I am here today is because his name was on the line. God protected me. Touch two people say for his name's sake, for his name's sake, for his name's sake, for his name's sake, for his name's sake. I was wrong, but I'm still here. I didn't get it right, but I'm still here. Somebody online right now, you ought to shout in your living room. You are not alive because you did it right. You're alive because his name is on the line. For his. I didn't get this job because of my education. I got this job because God needed to promote that people with GEDs could still get high paying jobs. I don't have this car because my credit was good. God just needed to prove that somebody with credit like mine can walk in and walk out with a low interest rate. I don't own my house because I made all of the right financial decisions. I got a house because his name. Somebody shout, his name is on the line. His name is on the line. Now watch this. If you are sitting there looking at me, I must tell you that one of the things in the fine print of the creation is that men must praise him. If you belong to him and his name is on you, or you can't be sitting there and you got his name on you, let the redeemed of the Lord not a wave so, not clap so, not a rock so, but say so. Let everything that has breath. Okay, maybe you don't know I'm talking to you. Psalms 150 says everything that has breath ought to what? All right, everybody take your hand, put it in front of your mouth, blow. Did you feel something? Then that means everything that has ought to, if you felt something, you ought to be saying something. If you felt something, you ought to be doing something. If you felt something, Tear the roof off of this place. If you felt something, disturb everybody in the apartment building. Let the redeemed of the Lord. Let the redeemed of the Lord. somebody the reason why God keep fixing this because his name is on the line. That's why you have to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. That's why you ain't got to manipulate. That's why you ain't got to trick nobody. That's why you ain't got to play around because God going to work that thing out because his reputation. That's what the devil don't know. God's got to fix it because his reputation. I see somebody thinking about that thing right there. You've been trying to figure out how you got out of that thing. 
for his name's sake. You trying to figure out how you still got all of your mind for his name's sake. You've been trying to figure out why you're not stressed out for his name's sake. my shepherd I shall not want we know all the rest he restoreth my soul he leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake yea though I I ain't even finna deal with the valley cause it ain't but a shadow tell your neighbor stop shouting at shadows We get stuck right here and it ain't nothing but a. I ain't finna deal with it. By definition, a valley should not depress you. By definition, a valley should not make you despondent. Because a valley, by definition, is the depression in between two peaks. You gotta have two peaks in order to have a valley. And we keep talking about the depression when in the middle of our depression, we are surrounded by. So I ain't finna get this no breathing room, no air. We pass it, yea, though I walk through the valley. So we're gonna walk right through the valley. Of the shadow of death, I will feel no evil. Here, let's stop here. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. This one blew my mind, Dr. James. This one blew my mind. This blew my mind. Because what, what would happen is sheep are naturally inquisitive. So you make a sound and they go in the direction. Because all oh, we like sheep. Have gone astray. So whenever the shepherd sees a sheep that keeps wandering, he takes the rod and breaks their legs on purpose. This in and of itself is a reflection of grace because remember in the Old Testament in the tabernacle on the Day of Atonement when it was time to give a sacrificial lamb it had to be a lamb without spot or blemish and now here the shepherd is intentionally causing a blemish to the sheep why does he break the leg of the sheep with the rod because a sheep that has a broken leg has a tendency to move closer to the shepherd because it knows that it now needs protection. So what you don't realize is that every time God breaks it, he won't shoot a... Get closer to him. If you don't get that, you got to understand what I'm trying to say, that when God breaks it, it is actually grace because he understands that when you are broken, you have a tendency to draw closer to him. This ain't punishment. This is grace. Better, better a broken leg than a broken life. He's trying to get you to lean on his everlasting. He didn't let the deal go through because it would cause you to stray too far. Yes, you're an entrepreneur, but he didn't allow the business to open just yet because he knows if you got that kind of money, you might not make it back to church. Yes, I know, he knows you want a man, but he, he, he's a jealous God. And he won't give you nothing to walk away from him with. 
So he withholds his best blessings until he knows he can give them the sheep that won't stray. Because he doesn't want to have to break your leg for you to stay close. He wants you to make a decision to draw near. He breaks their legs intentionally with the rod so that they will stay close. Everything you have gone through in 2022 was designed to keep you close. Look where you are on Wednesday. Still trying to get closer. It ain't that you ain't hungry. It's not that you are not tired and some of y'all drove through traffic just to get closer. Better to be broken near him than whole away from him. Tell somebody I may have some scars, but I'm still healed. Disappointments, but I'm still healed. Frustrations, but I'm still here. Prayers that I'm waiting on him to answer, but I'm still healed. I might cuss every once in a while, but I'm still healed. My attitude ain't where it need to be, but I'm still here. Oh, y'all ain't y'all fake. I'm, I'm talking to some real. My limp may look like punishment, but it's grace. He knew that I was stray. So he had to break me in the right place so I didn't end up in the wrong place. Who am I talking to in this place today? Who am I talking to online? Touch somebody and say, I'm still healed. Watch this. Watch this. I'm done. Thou, I wanted to get to this part. Preparest a table, not just the table, but he does it in the presence of my enemies. Before I finish this, just tell your neighbor, if you're going to be my enemy, you have to also be prepared for him to bless me in your face. Now, you just better hear what I'm telling you. you, you now, if you don't want to see me blessed, you better like me because he's going to prepare this table, not in the presence of my friends. See, most people can't get to the table because all they do is stay around friends. You ever found some of those people that they can't stand to be around people they don't like? And that's where the table is prepared. He prepares the table in the presence of my enemies. Now, this is what's happening here. The flat part of a mountain, I got some geology students in here. The flat part of a mountain is called a mesa. Interesting. That when you translate the word table in English to Spanish, mesa. If you know Swahili, the word for table, come on baby, who said that? Mesa, he prepares the flat part of the mountain in the presence of my enemies. Now, what, 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 what do you mean in the presence of my enemies? Well, I've been to this part of Jerusalem. I've been to this part of the Holy Land where they would go up the mountain and in the valleys of the shadows of death were lions and bears that knew the pattern of the sheep and since they knew the pattern of the sheep, they would hide in the shadows. Because every year they would come in the same way. Every year they would come in the same route. So the lions and the bears 
would be waiting. No wonder David says in 1 Samuel chapter 17 that I have taken my daddy's sheep out of the jaws of the lion, oh y'all, <laughs> and the bears. So what he would do, watch this, the shepherd would leave the sheep behind and go into the thicket and the shadows looking for lions and bears to kill them before the sheep arrived. Preparing the table. So, so after he kills all of the lions and the bears he could find, then he would go up to the mountain because in that area of the country, of the country, there are two types of flowers that pollinate the area. They are called commas, blue commas and white commas. The blue commas are nutritious for the sheep, but the white commas are poisonous. And so whenever the sheep would eat the white commas, it would paralyze them, making the shepherd have to stay behind until the sheep are no longer paralyzed. So since the shepherd doesn't have that kind of time, what he does is he goes and kills all of the lions and the bears and then goes to the table and plucks all of the white commas. So that when the sheep arrive, there is only one thing on the menu. Blue commas, preparing, y'all not listening the table so he kills the lions and the bears and he picks all of the poisonous commas why because since the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want and he prepares the table in the presence of my enemies the bears want to eat me but I want to eat the flowers so God says I love you so much I'm going to kill what wants you and pick what you want out of the way God says, I'm not going to allow you to be eaten by what wants you, and I won't allow you to eat what you want. You got the kind of God that deals with the stuff that wants you and the stuff that you want. Anybody in here want to just shout and hear God blocked it? Anybody want to be grateful that, that you didn't marry who you wanted to marry, that you didn't date who you wanted to date, that you didn't move when you wanted to move, that you didn't leave when you wanted to leave? Anybody want to thank God that he prepares? How many things has God protected you from that you wanted? Because everything that was going to kill you wasn't the devil. Some of that stuff you had an appetite for. <laughs> Slap three people and say, God blocked it. Oh, yes, he did. Somebody shout, God blocked it. God blocked it. If it wasn't for God, I would have chosen it. If it wasn't for God, I would have picked it. If it wasn't for God, I would have settled there. If it wasn't God, I would have... But, but God, God, God. He prepared the table in the presence of his enemies. And all of the enemies are not the things with jaws. Some of the enemies have a flavor. Some of the things that are designed to kill you, you want it. If one thing the devil knows is your appetite. Come on, y'all. The devil will put just what you want in front of you at the wrong time and will have you feasting on something that you know isn't good for you. This isn't the first time that the enemy or the last time the enemy would use an appetite to trip up a man or woman of God. If you are who you say you are, turn these stones in the bread if he can't destroy you with an enemy he'll destroy you with an appetite somebody shout Lord change my appetite take the taste out of my mouth for anything that ain't for me take the taste out of my mouth for anything that ain't connected to my destiny take the taste out of my mouth Lord I love them but take the taste out of my mouth Lord I love her but take the taste out of my mouth Lord I want to do what I want to do but Lord take the taste you, you better do it because if not you know how we do with our appetite 
Don't act like you know, you know you ain't supposed to eat salt, so you do it when ain't nobody looking. Don't act like you ain't ever went inside of the cupboard to eat. You, you know, some people go inside. Oh, y'all don't, don't act, come on now. You, you know you ain't supposed to have no potato chips, but you go. <laughs> y'all got a couple of more minutes and I'll finish this. He anoints my head with oil. So there is a disease that sheep catch called scab. They get it from the parasites that feast on them. And it's contagious. Sheep have to be careful what sheep they're close to. Because you will catch what they have. Do me a favor, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. what kind of attitude do you have? <laughs> no, no, I had you ask for a reason because attitudes are contagious. That's why you have to make sure you're next to somebody whose attitude is worth catching. So they have scab. So what the shepherd does to protect all of the sheep from themselves is he takes the sheep. Now watch this. He literally picks the sheep up and dips its head in the oil. I know you're thinking that he pours it on there and, and that's a good analogy, but the problem is you can't ensure that you've covered everything. So he literally takes the sheep, picks it up, and they hate it, but God does it anyway. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, I don't care what you do, you're going to get this anointing. Now, listen, I, 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 don't care how, I don't care how much you try to run from God. When he want to use you, he's going to use you. You're going to get this anointing. I know you try to act, I know you dumb down because you don't want to embarrass anybody, but you're going to get this anointing. I know you try to be not important, but you were made that way and you still going to do good. I know you try to tiptoe so you don't make anybody feel any certain kind of way, but you were wonderfully created in his image and after his likeness. Touch somebody and say, you're going to get this anointing. You're going to get this money. You're going to get this business. You're going to get this house. You're going to get this career. Why? Because you are anointed. I need all the anointed people to begin to shout. I didn't try to, but he made me this way. I didn't want it. I fought it, but he gave it to me anyway. All of the anointed people make some noise online and in this house. Watch this. At this time of year, once they get to the top of the mountain, it's mating season. And the men have a few females to choose from. So what they start doing, you've seen it on TV. <clears throat> you seen it? But because they have oil on their head. The oil creates an environment where friction isn't possible. So even though they're button heads, it slips off because they're anointed. Do you know why you haven't lost your mind? Because it's anointed. The oil has kept the trick of the enemy from sticking. Somebody shout, it won't stick. I don't care what the devil does, it won't stick. I don't care what the enemy says, it won't stick. I don't care what the doctor said, it won't stick. Somebody shout, it won't stick, it won't stick, it won't stick. It won't stick, it won't stick, it won't stick. It won't stick, it won't stick, it won't stick. Somebody shout, it won't stick.
Now, I'm, I'm pretty sure you're probably saying, I'm done. Why in the world did you call this sermon Reply All? <laughs> Reverend, I've been here with you. You've been doing all right, but you ain't kind of brought this thing together. What David does is he gets all the way to the end. He says to the flies, you know why you couldn't get me? He says to the fear, you know why you couldn't stop me? He says to the friction, you know why you couldn't put an end to me? To the lion and to bear. Do you know why I'm still here, lion and bear? Do you know, Mr. Wolf, why I'm still here? Do you know, troubled water, why I'm still here? Reply all. I'm not about to answer y'all individually. I'm about to tell y'all all at the same time because goodness and mercy was following me the whole time. Give your neighbor a high five and shall neighbor the only reason I'm still here is because goodness and mercy has been following me oh oh uh, the days of my life <laughs> give your neighbor a high five <laughs> and shout neighbor the lord is my shepherd <laughs> he's jehovah jireh <laughs> he's jehovah nisi <laughs> he's jehovah shikanu <laughs> he is a uh, yahweh <laughs> have i got somebody in the room <laughs> better begin to lose their mind. I'm still here by the grace of the Lord. I'm still here by his hand. Do me a favor and I'm gonna let y'all go home. Everybody in the room and everybody at home, if it's safe, I want you to turn around in a complete circle. Did you do it? Did your neighbor do it? Find somebody else. <laughs> Tell them, neighbor, when I move, you move just like that. <laughs> Turn around uh, in another circle. Did your neighbor turn around with you? If they didn't, maybe your neighbor's behind you. <laughs> turn around and look at another neighbor <laughs> and tell them, neighbor, I know I look crazy. <laughs> But the only reason why I keep turning around is because every time I turn around, he keeps on blessing me. Oh, my Shandaka. Every time I turn around, he keeps on blessing me. Shout yeah. Shout yeah. The literal translation for goodness and mercy, follow me all the days of my life, is literally this. Goodness and mercy shall track me down. Come here, man. I'm gonna show you what God meant when he said through David that goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Go wherever you want to go. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. somebody say God's got your back don't worry about the devil God's got your back don't worry about the fear God's got your back don't worry about the flies God's got your back don't worry about the famine God's got your back don't worry about the friction God's got your back Something's about to happen. Something's about to happen. 
Something's about to happen. Somebody's about to bust loose. Somebody's about to get freedom. Somebody's about to get their mind back. Somebody's about to get their swag back. Somebody's about to get their courage back. Everybody in this roof, shout, 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 shout. Yeah! Somebody say reply all. Cancer, diabetes, high blood pressure, breast cancer, brain tumors. Devil, you want my child. Devil, you want my marriage. Devil, you want my husband. Devil, you want my wife. Reply all. I'm telling all of y'all at one time, goodness and mercy and to the sickness that was blind copied to the devil I don't even know about it goes for you too goodness and mercy is tracking me to everything that the enemy has assigned to your life. You're too busy to talk to it all individually. I don't know what you're dealing with, but I want you to get it all in your head because we only got one email to send. I'm not about to send all of these different messages to all of my devils. I got one message for them all. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all of the days of my life. Oh, and by the way, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is the good news. Because if you get to the house of the Lord, you are so safe you don't even realize it. Because when you get to the house of the Lord, the enemy will chase you until you get to the house. He knows that he can't go in the house. You know why? Because if the devil follows you into the house, he's going to change. Because if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. So the, ne the devil knows he can't go in the house because he ain't ready to get saved. So once you get into the house of the Lord, you can go ahead on and take a seat at your table. Look through the screen door. Devil, you should have got me when you had a chance. but you let me make it to one more Bible study. For some of y'all, this is the breaking point. For some of y'all, this is the shift. Everything that you have been praying for is about to break tonight. Oh, you didn't hear what I said. I said everything that you've been praying for, everything that you've been waiting for, Everything that you've been fasting for is about to break.